Hi everyone, this is Terry, AB5K from Holland, Texas. Thanks for tuning in. Today we will be looking at a brand new ham radio application called AR Cluster Client. AR Cluster Client is used to display and filter cluster spots. That's mainly DX spots that are used for amateur radio DXing and contesting. The application is Windows based and runs under the .NET Framework 4.0. The design is a radically new approach that brings a lot of the power and capability that was traditionally up on the cluster, it now brings it down to the user side. You can see our cluster client running on your screen. The first thing we need to do is set your call sign. So you can go into the tools menu, go into settings, and there's a dialog where you can set your call as well as your latitude and longitude and save that information. After that, let's look at a connection. There is a connect tab in the upper left part of the screen. And we're going to connect to AB5K that's running out on the web. And we get a green connect light. From that, we can start looking at the windows that are available. If I bring up a DX window, you can see spots are coming in in real time. Let's also bring up an announcement window and uh, let's do a WWV window as well. So now we've got the three windows docked in, ta in tabs across the top of the screen. The application also supports docking. So if we want to move this announce window, we can grab its tab and bring it down and dock it on the bottom part of the screen. We can also bring WWV down. and Let's dock it in a similar spot. So now we've got DX running on the top, we've got Announce and WWV that we can switch back and forth on the bottom of the screen, and we're running a split screen that we can size appropriately to our needs. Another option is to go in and unpin the Announce, and the two Announce and WWV screens then collapse down, give us, giving us a full screen for DX. Now, I can also hover over the announce window and it starts popping up and let me resize it and drag it up a little bit so now as I bring as I bring the mouse across the announce tab I can temporarily get it to hover up and as I pull the mouse off the tab it disappears back so I can temporarily see what's behind that uh, at this point I'm going to turn off the connection to the host cluster and uh, that way the screen won't be flashing as much as these spots come in. And we're going to start looking at some of the new fields that are available. You can see the call frequency, comment, spotter, time that are traditional. But we have some new fields. The ATNO and the band mode is the all-time new one in band mode spots. And if you import a file, uh, I'm using the format for DX Labs for this, but the file has your country needs. Then you can come in and and uh, it will flag your country needs there on the screen. You can also import a buddy list of buddy calls, club members that you might want to go search out during a contest. It also tells you logbook of the world, if the spot's a skimmer. A, this column is used for uh, uh, filtering skimmer spots, removing a lot of the redundant spots. It will tell you the uh, name of the person being spotted, his continent, his country, his state, even his county, if for you county hunters. And uh, in certain contests, you need to know the AWRL section. That's displayed as well. You also get CQ zone, ITU zone, band mode, and some information all about the spotter that can be used for filtering. So this is the spotter's continent. So you could set up a filter to only see spots for North America. This is a spotter's country, the spotter state. CQ means there's a CQ in the comment field. And BOB is bottom of the band. And then we have the spotter node. So let's go back and look a little bit at filtering next. Now, filtering, there's a whole new concept in filters. The design goal was to make it so there's no commands to memorize and no dialogues, and so it's just so simple and easy to set up filters. You basically just 
look at the display, find the uh, column that you're interested in, and one of the first filters people are going to ask about is how do I turn off the skimmer spots? So you come up to skimmer, you're going to right click on that column, and you'll get a little window that pops up, and you can either select only skimmer spots, or you can select spots that are not skimmer, and as you change this, you'll see the filters being applied in real time right behind on the screen, and so we can say, I don't want to see any simmer spots, I can save that, and now that filter is applied. Now you might also want to add another filter for Logbook of the World, so let's enable Logbook of the World so we only see non-skimmer spots, so skimmer equals no, Logbook of the World equals yes, and notice over here on the left we have a, a little funnel icon indicating we're filtering the spots that are coming in. So. I can go over here, right click on a filter, and this this filter or this funnel with an X on it will allow me to remove that particular filter. If I pick the double funnels with the X, that removes all the filters. Another common spot that, uh, or filter that people will be using is they don't want to see all the spots from around the world. And so there they can go over to the spotter continent and say spotter continent equals North America. And so now they can only see the spots that originate in the North America. They could either further divide that down and say only want to speed, see the spots that are in the US. So they could say spotter CTY is equal to a K. And you probably want to take this filter away. And now we're only seeing spots that originate in the US. Another interesting filter has to do with uh, the text fields. And so, say on a call sign, we can filter by an exact match. So we select the equal sign. We could say we don't want to see this particular call, which is, the, which is this symbol. And then we have the concept of wildcards. So on a wildcard, if I want to find all the stations with, say, Zulu Lima, and we don't have any, say, all the stations with a 5 in the call. Uh, you can do so with that. So that's a little bit, of, should give you a good insight as to how the filters work. Uh, let me show you uh, a little typical, uh, some typical filters, and let's go set up. We'll say an in Say, you're, say we're interested in, let's do a call sign, it's going to be equal to uh, DX0DX. That's the new Spratly Island de-expedition. So I could have a DX window with a filter set just looking for them. I could also come in, open a DX window, come over and say I only want to see my buddies on this call. Say we're in the middle of a contest and I want to make sure I work some of the guys in the club on the contest. So this would be a good filter for that. Uh, I could also open another DX window and I might come over and find the band and say I want that to only be six meter spots. So there we could have another window open for six meter spots and finally we could add another window just for normal DX spots that's just totally wide open. So as my interests change I can quickly go and, and scan these other windows and come back to my DX window as needed. Also check announcements occasionally to see what's uh, going on on the announcement side. So that's, that's a lot of, about uh, AR Cluster Client and about it for the demo. This is Terry, AB5K, and we'll see you in the next webcast or on the air. 73.